about driving two abreast now. It's all a bit of a traffic jam.
change of heart from our government and fixing of a 12 year old mistake a mistake that some MPs do not want fixed the seriousness of the current drought is well known but what is not so well known at least not in the halls of Parliament House is that in the southern connected basin we are suffering not from a lack of water in the rivers and dams, but from gross mismanagement of our abundant water resources. Our forefathers had the foresight to build dams and weirs, enough to get us through five or more years of drought. So how did we run out of water in 2017, the first year of a new drought in the Southern Basin? In 2007, the Water Act was introduced, and through that act, the Murray-Darling Basin Plan came into effect in 2012. To say that this plan has been a devastating failure is an understatement. The plan has wasted vast amounts of irrigation water, driven water prices to unsustainable levels, pushed many farms and businesses into bankruptcy, caused the loss of thousands of jobs, the collapse of communities, and seen decent, hard-working people take their own lives in despair. Farmers are forced to watch a full river run by, see billions of litres of water used to water wetlands during a drought when they would naturally be dry and know that billions more litres of water are flowing out to sea all while they have little to no allocation from the water rights that they've invested in. Farmers are forced to watch their crops die or sell their herds with decades of irreplaceable breeding to the slaughterhouse simply because they cannot afford to feed and water them. If you doubt that something is very wrong with the water management in the southern basin, take this simple example. In 2016, the Murray River experienced extensive and damaging flooding. The river was not full, it was overflowing. Yet in 2016, general security water license holders in the New South Wales Murray received just 60% allocation of water. The fact that farmers cannot even get a full allocation during a flood makes a mockery of the concept of a water right and shows beyond doubt that something is very broken. Since 2016, many farmers have had little to no allocation, but they must continue to pay their bills, their debts, or even their delivery charges on water they aren't receiving. This cannot go on. Our farmers, our towns, our people are on their knees. We are here today because we believe this unfolding disaster is being dismissed and minimised by members of your government. The very people you trust to keep you informed on matters like this have let you down and us by failing to acknowledge the seriousness of our plight and by pressing on with the Murray-Darling Basin Plan despite the overwhelming evidence of its failure. We are here today because we believe that members of your government as well as members of the opposition and retired MPs have traded in water or been the beneficiaries of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan and profited from our suffering using insider information to benefit themselves while sitting in Parliament with undeclared conflicts of interest. We are here today because there is no transparency of water ownership, even though a transparent and public water register is required under the law. We believe that MPs past and present have engaged in immoral, unconscionable and possibly illegal conduct, and that they are actively seeking to ensure their sins do not find them out. We are here today because we believe that you would never willingly preside over the destruction of Australia's food bowl. Nor would you knowingly keep MPs who have acted in bad faith inside your government. We are here today because you need to know the truth, unvarnished and untainted by the gatekeepers who have kept this information from you until now. We are here because we believe that you can be our miracle. We believe that you have the courage to make the necessary changes to bring real relief to irrigators in the Murray-Darling Basin. And we've come prepared with plans and proposals that can be easily implemented to bring immediate relief, followed by real reforms and nation-building projects that will return our basin to being a sustainable food bowl where both nature and humans alike can flourish. 
And we have faith that you will implement the existing laws which demand transparency of all water license holders and all transactions past and present. Prime Minister, we appeal to you to act. As a matter of the highest urgency, we appeal to you to brush aside the objections of MPs and ministers as you implement a transparent and public water register as required by law, and we ask you to meet with us to discuss the steps that can be taken, both immediate and long term, to set things right. Prime Minister Scott Morrison, will you be our miracle? In faith and hope, Topher Field, on behalf of the people of the Murray-Darling Basin. Little Brad, you've said enough. You pipe down. <laughs> Had to fight for what was your right. You literally paid for it. You have this thing called a water right. It's your right. It's been taken. We're going to hear today from a lot of fantastic speakers, incredible men and women who have been campaigning very hard to win this fight. Water everywhere. You'll find these... Um, these bottles of water distributed around the place. Please help yourself. If you're feeling dehydrated, please make sure you stay on top of that. I think it's lost in Australia, Paris. We'll talk about that later. We're in Canberra. And we didn't come for a haircut. Thanks so much for coming, for making the effort. I know you've travelled from all over Victoria and the length and the breadth of the Murray River, Mildura to Albury, the Bidgee and beyond. And all these trucks that made the effort from all those towns to come up here and make a scene to force these blokes to the table. Give yourselves a clap. To attract the attention of Johnny Barillaro and Melinda Pavey invited us up to, up to Sydney and we had a good hard long chat with them and we uh, explained the problems and we gave them some solutions and they've since told Little Proud he can stick his plan, they're going to leave. And I hope to Christ they stick to it. <laughs> Team New South Wales is the loser. And I don't want to make this a state versus state thing because I'm bloody sure there are no South Australians getting any benefit from two million megalitres running out the ocean. But we're missing out on about six billion dollars worth of productivity. And I cannot for the life of me believe why any government on this planet would support that sort of policy, threaten food security, and make your life miserable for no gain. So near we, here we are in Canberra. And as Topher said, you're all good, honest, hard-working, conservative farmers. You've got plenty to do in the middle of harvest, busiest time of the year, and you're going to great expense to drive up here to the nation's capital to make a point of delivering a very strong message. I had them away from you people and wasted, under the guise of environmental flows, which it's not because, as we all know, it's damaging those beautiful forests that we love and care about. Yep. Flooding those forests for six months of the year, killing those trees, silting up those rivers, eroding trees, killing our native fish, killing our crayfish, and the only claim to fame is breeding shitloads of carp. No more. That's it, no more. Not me, not you, not ever anymore. Not as long as we live. One thing I do want to say, and I'm not trying to wind anyone up, I want you to be respectful. They've, we will behave today. They've tried to make us out to be thugs and bullies. They've done everything to discredit us. My wife, my children, and my granddaughter was here are out in the crowd and I don't want anybody to threaten them or endanger them anytime, anywhere, and that goes for these morons in that building. We're not a pocket of whinging rebels. We're not a minority of sooks from the south. 
we are thousands strong and we represent and speak for thousands more at home. We farmers that just want to grow food. We don't damage the environment and we're entitled to a life and we're here to demand those rights back. I cannot believe and will never accept such stupidity to take so much water out of production and waste it out to sea by absolute mismanagement and cause an estimated $15 billion between the three valleys, Murrumbidgee, Murray and the Gulf. I was just reading it on the internet and the best banner I've seen said that there are seven and a half billion people in the world. 200 million of them can feed themselves, the rest of them need farmers. <laughs> they wanted more subsidies, we have none. They wanted more respect, we have none of that either. And they want a bigger margin, we don't have much of that. My coach used to always say, don't ever push a loyal person to the stage where they no longer give a shit. It doesn't end well. This is a woman that you do not want to find yourself on the wrong side of. She knows what she believes and she's unafraid to stand for it. The good news is she's out there standing for you. She's out there standing for water users right across the Murray-Darling Basin. Obviously her constituents as well, but right across the Murray-Darling Basin. Ladies and gentlemen, would you give a huge round of applause to Helen Dalton. needed to behave better and not to be so aggressive. I have one question for Mick. Have you asked for better behaviour from the politicians and bureaucrats who created this mess? We had our first study showing what the damage was happening in our area to the Murray-Darling Basin. We have the National Party members in the federal government in power in this country today and what are they doing about it? They're not doing anything and it's about time they started finding all the things that are wrong and started fixing them one by one to get some justice back there, to get our communities functioning again, to get families off their knees and to give young people, young farming families, a thought for the future, a hope that they can live and farm just the way our previous generations have. Thank you. Susanna Sheen, everybody. Thank you so much. Now, stewards, they're afraid to hear from some angry voters from their own electorates. So I expect they haven't mustered up the energy to walk all the way down. I was going to say air conditioned oh, off, maybe it's heated today. Somewhere behind me for Asia. At this rate, Little Proud's legacy is going to be creating a dust bowl, a basket case of Asia. I don't know who he thinks he represents, the Water Evaporation Society, the Lower Lakes frogs and, frogs and Toads, the South Australian freshwater boating enthusiasts. Even though we've had two years of drought, there's plenty of water in the rivers. Millions of litres are flowing past us every day for no purpose. What's the point of having any infrastructure for water if we don't provide water to the people who need it?
been so good and behaved they're gonna let us through for a bit. to 
stay at the bollards and be quiet and respectful. But now they're letting us go up to the... No, guys. So hopefully it remains under control. <laughs> Poor old police. It's getting noisy now. Full of photographs and videos by tonight. Have to can the video. We're running out of battery now. So that's about it, folks. Thank <laughs> you.